Uh, take your Bible, turn to Ephesians chapter 6. Maybe this will help you understand what's going on in our world. The Bible has the answers for everything. God allows us to see places that we're not meant to see. Do you think there are things that go on, let's say in corporate headquarters, where they have meetings about their business strategies and how they're going to put down their, their uh, competitors? Do you think they would ever let us in on those meetings? No. You think guys in the mafia, when they're planning a heist or a shakedown, do you think they'd ever let somebody like us in on their, on their meeting, on their secret dealings? No. They don't call the police and say, hey, we're having a meeting. Bring your microphones over. You'll need to catch this. They don't do that. I can tell you that a lot of things in this world are done in secret. John Fitzgerald Kennedy actually made a speech. And in this speech, I think it was while he was president, he berated secret meetings, secret societies, closed door meetings, where the fate of the country was decided in secret without the knowledge of the people who are supposed to be in charge of this country, which is us. And he said, such secrecy is not conducive to a democracy. And he was right on that. That may have what got him killed, who knows. I do believe that Kennedy's murder was a cover-up. I have no doubt in my mind about it. Now, I don't know who did it. Don't know why they did it. I just know there's a rat in there somewhere because it sure stinks. Amen? Other things that have happened. Oklahoma City, 9-11. Some of the wars that we've been involved in. Amen? So you're about to understand why. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. You have your Bible open, say amen. Put on the whole armor of God. And I'll tell you something. If you ain't got it on now, you better get it on. It is time to armor up, people. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. We touched on that last Sunday morning. And against spiritual wickedness in high places. And I'm always going to mention this. Remember, these four are always going to target, let me get them in here, these four. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That is the, that is the target of what their conspiracy... By the way, let me explain the word, the word conspiracy. Let me break that word down for you. Con means with. So if you have... Pasta con carne. You got pasta with bacon. It's good stuff. So con means with. Spira. It, it, sort of, it sort of implies like you speak with your breath, like a whisper. But it's the word breath or the word spirit. And... There are spirits who want to control, number one, your life. They want to control your family. They want to control our church. And they definitely want to control our country. And they want to control the world. What stopped Hitler from controlling the world? God used this country to do it. What stopped Japan, the empire of Japan, from taking over the entire Pacific Basin? God used this country to do it. And I think 
the, the evil forces of this world know that America stands in the way. Total domination. Doesn't take a wild-eyed conspiracy theorist, even though Nancy Pelosi thinks we are. Doesn't take somebody like that to figure that out. That's what's going on. But I want you to notice that it says spiritual wickedness in high places. Now I want you to think about that term, high places, and he says the word spirit. So it's not just human involvement. If you think that there was a conspiracy to kill the president, 1963, I think there had to be spirits involved in it. As I mentioned um, in Sunday school, I mentioned on last week's Watchmen, there was, I believe it, there was a ritual to enthrone the fallen archangel Lucifer held in St. Paul's Chapel in the Vatican, same year, 1963. There were spirits involved in that. If you think there was something fishy behind 9-11, Building 7, never made sense to me. In order for all of that to work out, I think that there was a spiritual involvement in that. So if you try to apply just human agents to a conspiracy, it doesn't work. Not, the, the factors just don't, they don't, just don't work out. But spirits are able to do and manipulate what humans are not. So if you want to just kind of get your thinking biblical, think that there is a devil and a whole bunch of devils involved working against this. There was in the Old Testament, there was in Jesus' day, there was in Paul's day, and there are right now. In fact, John said, he said, you've heard that Antichrist shall come. And he said, I say unto you that there are many Antichrists. And he said, because the spirit of Antichrist doth already work. He said it in 2 Thessalonians when he talked about the Antichrist sitting in the seat of God. And he said that Satan is already working that power and that plan right this minute. He said he's already doing it. He's been doing it for thousands of years and he's good at it, and he's going to continue doing that work. So when you look out at this world and see that things don't make sense, think spiritual, then it might click. Which means that you can discover a whole lot about what's going on in this world by reading... I'm telling you, I'm... Not 100% done with the internet. But I'm done believing most of what I read on the internet. On both sides. In fact, I'm sick of it. The lies that are being told by most people on the internet. You're being warned. Your pastor is warning you right now. Don't fall for it. Thank you. It is my job to protect the sheep from the wolves who are all around, left, right, middle, back, overhead. They're jumping out of trees. It is my job to protect this flock from the lies. Let's pray. Father, I love you. Thank you, dear God, for the calling of the watchman. I don't wish to exalt myself because I've not done anything except for what you've asked me to do. I love my people. I would die for these people. I give my life for these people. And I care about them. I care about their souls. I care about how they turn out. I care about their families. I care about their heartaches, their burdens. I wish many times, God, that I could take their cares from off of them, but I can't. But you can. You can. 
So, Father, teach us in these last days. This is the reason, Father, why you told us to walk by faith and not by sight. Help us, dear Jesus, to stop trusting our eyes. Because our eyes will fail us every time. And help us not trust and lean to our own understanding either. Because our understanding is darkened. Help us to trust your word alone. Your word alone. Bless this message. Father, I don't know how to preach it. You do. I pray, dear God, that you would be a blessing to your people and open up our eyes and help us to see what's going on in this world. Help us to see where the enemy is. But Father, we must, we must put on that armor of God. Bless your word today. Bless those who hear it. We pray in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, Amen. Now, the question is, what are these high places? Well, I mean, it's pretty simple. When you think of something that's uh, like on high, lifted up on high or whatever, uh, we, we say this term, well, the bigwigs upstairs want it done this way. What that means is, the people who sit on the 40th floor office, who have that corner office, they're the one that makes all the plans and all decisions. That means, or we'll say something like, well, that's not, that's way above my pay grade. And what that means is, I'm not equipped to handle that because I'm just, I'm one of the low men on the totem pole. That needs to go to somebody who's a lot higher than me. That's how we use that term. And I want you to think in those, think in those ways. So when there is spiritual wickedness in high places, that is part of what it means. But we also have a connection with something that we find often in the Old Testament. And it was a place that is referred to as the high places. Look at on the screen or turn in your Bible, Numbers 22, Numbers 21. Underline these. Maybe, in fact, I, I, if you could do this. Can I give a homework assignment out? Can I do that? Will you do it? Oh, that's what I thought. You're just like me. Handing me the homework assignment was not a guarantee that I was doing the homework assignment. Numbers chapter 22, verse 41. And it came to pass on the morrow that Balak took Balaam. We know who he was, right? He was a prophet for hire, a prophet for profit. He took Balaam and brought him up into the high places of Baal. Who was Baal? Baal, you can think of as an Old Testament prototype of the Antichrist. He was often depicted as a bull. So he's a beast god. And the beast god, Baal had to be worshipped on a mountain, a hill, any place that was up high. In the Bible, I mentioned this in Sunday school, in the Bible, pits and valleys and low places represent hell. The last battle that's going to be fought is where? The valley of Armageddon. It's in a vale. It's in a valley. Mountains will represent Heaven or the heavens. Okay? So when Moses went up on top of the mountain, Mount Sinai, what is that a picture? When he came down from Mount Sinai, it's a picture of Christ coming down from heaven is what it is. So the gods, didn't matter what gods they were, they all had to be worshipped up in a high place somewhere. Not, not all of them, I'll say, because I also mentioned this in Sunday school. Some of them, the gods that we see when Saul went to the witch of Endor to pull up a familiar spirit, she saw the gods ascending up out of the earth. And so in paganism, in the old cult practices, a lot of times they would have their rituals down in a pit or down in a cave somewhere because that's where their gods were. It surprised me that I found out that the Muslim religion is looking for a savior to come He's supposed to be called the, the 12th Imam. 
He, is, he was actually a, a, a high imam from back around the early days of Islam. And he died. And I thought that when he came back, he was going to come down from heaven. I was wrong. There's a well in Iran that he's supposed to pop up out of. And I'm going, I know who that is. He's one that's coming up out of the pit. Amen. He's coming up out of hell. That's the Antichrist. That was pretty easy, wasn't it? I figured that out on my own. So, but they had to be worshipped in high places. Why? Because that's where these gods wanted to be seen of men. We're higher than you. And I want you to think about it. Did not God say to us as the son of men that he made us a little lower than the angels? Which should be a reminder to us. Any, anytime somebody has a hill in a battle, they have the advantage, don't they? They have the advantage. Devils like for you to know that. When they're battling you, they want you to know that they are more powerful than you. They can make you do things and they can, they can hurt you or they can kill you or they can do things to you and you can't do anything back because you're a puny human. Well, remind them that you serve a God that is way higher than them. Amen. Amen. So it came to pass on the morrow that Balak took Balaam and brought him up into the high places of Baal that thence he might see the utmost part of the people. So... On these high places, whether they were mountains or hills, or, I'll show you in a minute, artificial, man-made high places, that is where they would perform wicked practices. Human sacrifices. Child sacrifices so let me ask you a question do you think that that still happens child sacrifices you better believe it drinking the blood of these human Sacrifices. If you heard of adrenochrome? So that's a conspiracy theory going around the internet, Dave. And I wasn't sure if I believed it. And then I read the Bible. And you know what Babylon gets drunk from? Blood. The blood of martyrs and the blood of saints. And they say that adrenochrome is a better high than anything that anybody's ever had. But think about the depravity you have to sink to to do that. I can't prove it. But it would not surprise me one bit to find out that there are people in Washington, D.C. right now that have done it. Is that not spiritual wickedness in high places? Sexual perversions in high places. Raping these sacrifices before they sa or after they sacrifice them including children. Numbers 21, 28. For there is a fire gone out of Heshbon, a flame from the city of Sion. It hath consumed Ar of Moab. You know who Ar is? He was a pirate. Ar. That was pretty good, wasn't it? That was pretty funny. He was a giant. It hath consumed Ar of Moab and the lords of the high places of Arnon. The lords of the high places would be the gods of the high places who are worshipped by human agents, or in this case, giants. And they always worship them in high places. Psalm 78, 58. For they provoked him to anger with their high places. 
and moved him to jealousy with their graven images. So they would, in these high places, they would build something up or they would build a building or they would, on top of a hill or a mountain, they would usually set a temple up there and they would put a, an image up there of some kind. That would be their God. And that would be the God that they would worship. Now, um, when Cortez and Columbus and these explorers from the New, New World, when they came over to the Americas, didn't matter what island or what part of North or South America they landed on, they wrote about the things that they saw. And the natives of the Americas were so wicked and depraved. Literally, they would have days where on these pyramids, the blood would just be in a constant flow down these high places. They would sacrifice one person after another, after another, after another. In some cases, thousands of people at a time sacrificing them in these high places. That's how depraved their mind was. Even Solomon got in on it. First Kings eleven seven. Then did Solomon build a high place for Chemosh. You know who that is? That's Saturn. The god Saturn. The abomination of Moab. In the hill. Notice he's telling you that where it, where it happened. He built a high place in the hill that is before Jerusalem. And for Molech. What was Molech known for? Causing their children to pass through the fire. Turn to, um, turn to 2 Chronicles 33. Here's an example of spiritual wickedness in high places. Because it involves spirits. Now, if, uh, if two guys get in a fight in a bar... And one guy pulls out a knife, goes after the other eye, the guy, the, asset, the other guy pulls out a gun, shoots him, kills him. Well, we would say, well, that was a bar fight. That's, you know, between these two guys. We wouldn't necessarily think that there was, you know, some big ritual sacrifice going on here. I, I do believe that these men would have spirits provoking them. I do believe that. But we wouldn't necessarily think that this was some ritualistic practice. But I guarantee you, when they build a whole building whose sole purpose is to carve up and destroy human beings, that's a high place. Like an abortion clinic. That's a high place. Amen? You think there are devils there? They're, oh, they're there. They're there. I cannot fathom the depravity of a doctor or a nurse who swore an oath to always save life and never take life. The depravity of a doctor to carve up a child inside or outside the womb. Because some of those babies lived, they survived the abortion attempt. And now, thanks to our beloved senators and congressmen and judges, that's allowed now. That's not murder. Where do they go meet God? Where did I tell you to turn? Second Chronicles 33. Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign. He reigned 50 and 5 years in Jerusalem. But he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, like unto the abominations of the heathen, whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. For he built again the high places which Hezekiah, his father, had broken down. You know, if Hezekiah had died when he was supposed to die, he would have never had Manasseh. He had Manasseh after he begged God to let him live. Hezekiah's father had broken down. He reared up altars for Balaam and made groves and worshipped all the hosts of heaven and served them. And he built altars in the house of the Lord. He did this in the church house. 
um, in the house of the Lord, where the Lord had said in Jerusalem, shall my name be forever. And he built altars for all the host of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord. And he caused his children, his own children, to pass through the fire in the valley of the... See the valley? And it was, a, it was the fire in the valley. It's telling you it's a picture of hell. By the way, the valley of the son of Hinnom is where the Hebrew word Gehenna comes from. And the Hebrew word Gehenna is translated hell in your Bible. They named hell after this place. So what you have literally is hell on earth. And he used enchantments and used witchcraft and dealt with a familiar spirit and with wizards. He wrought much evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. And he set a card image. This is something he did that had never been done before him. He set a carved image, the idol which he had made in the house of God. He should have never done that. And the devils were all... So, so now you have devils living in the house of God. Of God and God is never okay with that never back to first Kings 11 7 Solomon built a high place for Chemosh the abomination of Moab in the hill that is before Jerusalem and for Molech the abomination of the children of Ammon first Kings 14 23 for they also built them high places and images and groves on every hill and under every green tree. Second Kings 17, 29. Howbeit every nation made gods of their own and put them in the houses of the high places which the Samaritans had made every nation in their cities wherein they dwell. So what is it about, why is it that these gods require a high place? Well, if you do, if you look around the world, usually in just about every place in the world where there's a mountain, somebody at some time either attempted to or actually built a temple to these gods on tops of these mountains. When I landed in Turkana, you people in Turkana, there is a high place in your town, Lodwar. And it's right next to the airport. You say, what are you talking about, Pastor? When I landed at that airport, I got out of that plane. I looked up. There's a hill that overlooks the airport. And there's a great big, I don't know how tall it is, but you can see it from miles around. A big statue of guess who? Jesus. But is it Jesus? It ain't Jesus. You know how I know? Because it's an idol. And Jesus is never an idol. Now, I'm not telling the people of Laudwar to climb up that mountain and tear that down. God will do it. And if you think that that image up on that high place pleases God. Jesus said, if I be lifted up. I will draw all men unto me. Not my image. Not a statue pretending to be me. He said, if I am lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. This is what he was talking about right here. Somebody say amen. amen. What are these? Uh, the one on your far left there at the top. Does anybody recognize that? That's Cahokia Mound over in Illinois. Why did they build these things? There on the bottom right is what's called the Serpent Mound. It's in Ohio. When our forefathers came into this land in North America, what they saw everywhere were these mounds. What they were, were artificially built high places. They brought in dirt, rocks from everywhere to build these humongous, in the, in the case of the Cahokia Mounds, 
I mean, that thing's huge. It must have taken them years to build this. But why did they build it? Because it was the place that their gods demanded that they had to be worshipped in that spot. That's North America. Here's Central and South America. They were a little bit more sophisticated. Probably because they had more giants down there. Um, some of these temples are absolutely astounding at the positioning, the mathematics behind them. I could, I could talk to you about uh, this one on the lower left-hand corner. Uh, Chichen Itza, I remember that because it sounds like chicken pizza. It is, a, it is a temple dedicated to Quetzalcoatl, who is their serpent god. They worship the dragon. Uh, the one on the top left is, the, I think, the temple, the pyramid of the sun. But these pyramids in Central and South America are absolutely astounding at the precision, the stonework, the, the weight of the stones. They're wondering how in the world did they build these things. But I'm telling you, at the top, at the pinnacle of every one of these, wicked depravity took place. Evil things took place up there. All in the name of religion. Could it not be said that the worst things that have ever happened in this world have been done in the name of somebody's God? But not ours. You know what the difference is between our God and their God? Their God demands that you sacrifice yourself or somebody you love for them. Our God sacrificed Himself for us. That's love. That's love. The pyramids in Egypt. Artificially built high places. By the way, I, I'm not going to spend time on this, but Matthew and I were talking about this the other day. These pyramids are aligned perfectly with the three stars in Orion's belt. So what does that mean? It was a way... Turn your Bible to 2 Thessalonians. I'm getting ahead of myself, but I, I want to explain it this way. Turn your, turn your Bible to... No, 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians. Let me show it to you like this. Where's God right now? Where's God? Where's Jesus? It's up there at the right hand of the Father. Where are we? Down here. Okay? What's going to happen when the trumpet sounds? He's coming down. We're flying up. Where are we going to meet? In the air. 1 Thessalonians 4. So, and, and I want you to think about this now. For the, verse 16, For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Now He's not coming all the way down to the earth yet. Descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Not fight over them. Comfort one another. You see, what we want, we want to be caught up. We want Christ to come down. What did Jesus teach us to pray? Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, take that concept and completely corrupt it. They want Satan's kingdom and these gods to come down here. These high places were a way that man would ascend as the gods would come down. Does that make sense to everybody? That man would go up, 
and they want the gods to come down. And they're coming. They're coming. Uh, these are there's actually pyramids in China. The Chinese government tried to hide this one. So they sent a bunch of guys out years ago to plant trees. The only thing was they planted all the trees in rows. Because they wanted it to look like just a hill, but they planted all the trees in rows. We are going, that didn't work out too well, did it? This uh, temple in China up on the upper left hand, it has three circles on it, and that represents the three heavens. And this actual temple, the designing of it, it was intended to mean that heaven and earth were to join together in this spot. Okay? So we want to bring heaven down. We want man to come up. We want heaven to join earth together in this spot. So if I can just say this just for a minute. The purpose of, let me use the word, the Bible word, fornication rites on top of these high places, that's the intention behind it. Is that the man represents the gods in heaven and the woman represents the humans on the earth. And it was intended to bring the gods down and elevate man at the same time and join them together. That was the purpose of it. And like I say, even to this very day, they're using children. Aren't they? The Tower of Babel, what was the Tower of Babel about? Let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach into heaven. John 3.14, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. I have already referenced that. First Thessalonians 4, we've already read that. For this we say unto you that by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. So it's about us ascending. But did we make ourselves ascend? Did we climb up anything? No, God lifted us up. And that's the difference right there. You see, in the devil's religions, it's always man lifting himself up, elevating himself to godhood. What was the devil telling Eve would happen if she ate the fruit? If you eat this, ye shall be as gods. So the elevation of man and the bringing down of these gods is the point of all these high places. Incidentally, but not accidentally, the Vatican got its name from the Vaticanus Hill. There are seven hills in Rome. Some people say that those are the seven mountains that are the seven heads of the beast. St. Peter's Square was built deliberately on a high place. And I could go for hours and show you the symbolism behind it. But I will tell you that the ritual that I mentioned earlier, the enthronement of the fallen archangel Lucifer took place in this place. Who has a hard time believing that? I don't. Because there's evil practice there for well over 1500 years. Now, Rome, the city of Rome, where Caesar lived and where the Senate of Rome met, was a place called Capitoline Hill. Does that sound familiar to anybody? That's a high place. Called what? Capitol Hill. So let me ask you a question. Back, back to the, here. Is there spiritual wickedness done in this place? Does spiritual wickedness take place 
in this place. When you're wondering how we ended up losing an election that we know we won, and then wondering why nobody here did a thing about it, you have to know that there are spirits here. And I could show you things in this building that would blow your mind. But it's a, it's a house of the gods is what it is. And there are spiritual wickedness that takes place in this house every single day. And you don't have to have somebody on the inside coming out saying, Hey, I saw this take place at the Capitol. All you have to do is read your Bible. And then it's, stuff starts making sense. When you're wondering why the thoughts of our politicians and our judges and our presidents are so corrupt and so full of guile and why nothing, nothing ever changes. We keep voting the good guys in. The good guys never do anything for us. When you keep wondering why that happens, understand there is spiritual wickedness going on in high places. And what I, not just the fact that it's on a hill. Any place where there is a centralized control and power, there will be spiritual wickedness moving in to control that. This is Apple's new headquarters. It was designed to look like a UFO. They designed it like a flying saucer. That's no kidding. Yeah, it's called the mothership. Do you think that there are spiritual wickedness things going on in this corporate headquarters? Do you think that they have plans that they're making that will affect you that you have no say over whatsoever. So, they're keeping track of my heartbeat. I hate it when my watch dings and it says, breathe. What am I, blonde? But you have to tell me. They keep all this data. They record everything. Everything. They keep and record. To use it. Because they're building a God. Called AI. Aren't they? And there's a ghost in that machine for sure. That's spiritual wickedness in high places. Wall Street. Do, is it our economy or is it theirs? Is it our money or is it their money? In fact, Jesus told us that when they handed him a coin. He looked at it and said, whose picture is on that? They said, Caesar's. They said, that's Caesar's money. It might be in your pocket, but it's Caesar's money. See, we lost this thing a long time ago, didn't we? Do you might recognize this? That is a, it's on a hill. It was built, designed to look like a temple. It's on Jeffrey Epstein's island. And there are tunnels underneath here. If you don't believe me, just ask Bill Clinton. He's been there. At least 26 times that we know of. Or you can ask Hillary. She's been there about six times that we know of. Or John Kerry. Or John Roberts, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. Remember? Spiritual wickedness in high places. 
So John Roberts got voted in as a conservative chief justice. But has he been a conservative since 2008? Not at all. He's turned his back on us and done spiritual wickedness in high places. And now we don't have a say in what goes on in our country anymore. Do you believe that? Say amen. So, is this a physical battle that we need to fight in this country? The battle spiritual. This is the head headquarters of the Southern Baptist Convention. In this article, leaders of the Southern Baptist Convention have called uh, something the report from Texas newspapers of hundreds of sex abuse cases in affiliated churches, pure evil and satanic behavior within their ranks. Spiritual wickedness, even in the church. Even in churches all across America. Turn to Ezekiel chapter 8. See, here's, here's what I'm hoping to show you this morning. Did I tell you I don't like the internet? I don't trust what I see anymore. I don't trust what I read anymore. Unless, unless I can show it to you in the Word of God. Now, in Ezekiel's day, there were things going on in the temple that nobody knew about. Nobody could see inside of there. You had to be a Levite priest. And even at that, you had to be in the higher echelons. You had to be one of the big wigs among the Levites to ever get inside the temple. Or you could not know what was going on in there. But God knew, didn't He? By the way, listen to your preacher. God always knows. What goes on in secret? Does he not? Hey, see this right here? This is a high place. Does God always know what goes on in here? In Ezekiel 8, 5, he said unto me, Son of man, lift up thine eyes now toward the north. So I lifted up mine eyes toward the north. Behold, northward at the gate of the altar, this image of jealousy in the entry. There was an idol. And he said, Furthermore unto me, Son of man, see us what they do? Even the great abominations that the house of Israel committeth here, that I should go far off from my sanctuary. But turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. It gets worse. Verse 10. So I went in and saw him, behold, every form of creeping things, an abominable beast, and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about. It would be like if I came in here over the week and I painted dragons and snakes and devils and pagan gods all over the walls and put statues up in here. You came in here Sunday and went. That wouldn't have just happened overnight. That would have been going on in me for years. But eventually it comes out, doesn't it? And there stood before them 70 men of the ancients of the house of Israel. In the midst of them stood Jezaniah, the son of Shaphan, with every man his censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. Then said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? Every man in the chambers of his imagery? For they say, The Lord seeth us not, the Lord hath forsaken the earth. But he's not done. Verse 15. Then he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. Every place he went further into the temple, it got worse. And the higher up he went, as far as the, the leaders of Israel, the higher up he went, the worse it got. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house. And behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men with their backs toward the temple of the Lord. They turned their back on God, didn't they? And their faces toward the east, and they worshipped the sun 
And they were doing it in God's house. But he's not done. Verse 17, he said, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence and have returned to provoke me to anger. And lo, they put the branch to their nose. Therefore will I also deal in fury. Mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity. And though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear them. And I submit to you that in denominational headquarters, corporate headquarters, political headquarters, society headquarters, you name it, any place in this country where there is a branch of power or a grouping of higher power, spiritual wickedness is being done there. Aren't you glad God didn't call you into politics or God didn't call you into big business or God, you say, well, I'm not smart enough. Thank God you're not smart enough. Do we not understand that we elect people to go to Congress and they wake up one morning with dirty pictures laying on their bed that somebody took when they got entrapped, when they went to a D.C. bar one night, ended up in bed with some guy or some gal or some teenager or some child, and they sent them the pictures and they said, you'll do whatever we tell you to do. Do you believe that goes on? Do you believe cover-ups take place in high places? You better believe you, that you better believe it happens. That's... Spiritual wickedness in high places. So God tells us, do we fight the men? No, because that won't do any good, because they'll just bring in other men. Fight the spirits. Psalm 78, 58, For they provoked him to anger with their high places and moved him to jealousy with their graven images. Psalm, uh, Jeremiah 7.31 They have built the high places of Tophet which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom that's Gehenna to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire which I commanded them not neither came it into my heart. Ezekiel 6.3 And say ye mountains of Israel hear the word of the Lord thus saith the Lord God to the mountains and to the hills and to the rivers and to the valleys behold even I I will bring a sword upon you and will destroy your high places. Ezekiel 6.6 6, And your dwelling places, the cities shall be laid waste, and the high places shall be desolate, that your altars may be laid waste and made desolate, and your idols may be broken and cease, and your images may be cut down and your works may be abolished. God's going to deal with this. God is going to deal with this. Can I get God's people to say, I'm, I'm done preaching. Look at that. I preached right out of the Bible. Turn to Psalm 2. Why did the heathen rage? And the people imagine a vain thing. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together. That is a conspiracy. And we were warned by these politicians that when they got in power, they were going to destroy the right wing in this country. So, storming Congress won't work but God will let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us he that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh and the Lord shall have them in derision then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree the Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth. For thy possession, thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, and thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. And the Bible says that when Jesus returns, he's coming with a rod of iron in his hand. He's going to take care of it. Somebody say amen. Now, we've all bought ammunition, cleaned our guns, got ourselves ready. I think 
Pelosi and them want us to start shooting. But one thing's for sure they don't want us doing is praying. And they don't want us preaching our Bibles and reading them. That's the only way to defeat spiritual wickedness in high places. You can't beat Wall Street. You can't beat the bankers. You can't beat the Treasury. You can't beat the Senate, the Supreme Court, the Congress. You can't beat the President. You can't beat the Vatican. You can't beat any of them. But you can stand your ground and say, I'm not changing who I am and I'm not backing down. Let's have prayer for our country. Let's have prayer for our churches. We left a denomination because of the corruption. We didn't move away from them. They moved away from us. We stood still. And I am proud of this church. Thankful for it. But I know that we will always, and you people here in this church, will always be a target as long as you come here. But it's a war that's, that we're going to win. And it's a battle worth fighting. Father, we come before you today. We thank you for the most high God, Jesus Christ. And Lord, this is the issue. It's not the humans that's running the show. It's the devils behind them. Or the devils in them. Our own politicians, our judges, have committed, our preachers have committed abominable things. And now they're ensnared. Their lust, their greed, their bloodthirstiness has gained them power. But it has also gained them the wrath of your judgment. And Father, teach us. Teach us how to pray. How to pray often. How to seek you out. Teach us, Father, to never... Leave our swords unsheathed. To always have it ready. To take it with us wherever we go and to use it often. Because the next victim of the high place could be us. It could be me. Father, you and I both know that it's been tried multiple times. The devil's tried to get to me. And it almost worked. So Father, help me to stand against these forces of darkness. To stand for the people in this church. Stand for truth. Stand for what's right. And I know, God, that I have failed them. And we'll do so again. So Father, help them to never put me up on a pedestal. But to stand with me. As we stand against the evil. In our country. In our cities. And in our own lives. Everybody hearing me today knows the power of the enemy because 
they've been overpowered by it. They all have their weaknesses. And they know that their flesh cannot sustain the battle. So it is not by might, not by power, but by your spirit that we win. We don't know what it's going to take, God, for you to step down and to judge this nation. We don't know how long you're going to hold out. We don't know what you're waiting for. But Father, may we be found on that day as committed as we are this day to standing with you always. Help us to fight the battle. Help us to stand when we fall. Help us to keep about the armor of God always. Forgive us of our sins. Bless your people, we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen.